Hey there, welcome back to the table. So we're trying something new here. Uh, you are looking at the website called World of Araska, which is the website for the game. And so you can see here, we have our heroes here at, um, oh, what's the name of that city again? Vernick. So we have our heroes at Vernick. And um, this is one of the interfaces that are here. So um, the tagline that they use with the, uh, they don't have an app anymore. They're moving to this website here. Uh, like I said, it's called World of Araska. All you have to do is go to um, dungeonuniversalis.com. There's links to it and whatnot. You have to create a user account. Uh, you can see there that um, Shmoo34 is my, my username. And um, uh, I set up my green screen, so you are going to notice a little bit of crazy part here. And um, when I'm looking at the app, I can't see my camera screen. So my biggest concern is that I'm not going to have something in focus or I won't be, um, uh, you know, doing something right. And so, like, for example, if I flip back over to the uh, app here, uh, so I can uh, see the screen now. Uh, I'm looking at the camera here. So that's what it would look like, right? So if I'm showing you a card, it would come up over the, uh, the screen. And I got it set up right now to go in the bottom right corner. I can change that. I can even move it to be more towards the center um, if we need to, okay? Now, I did notice that some things are goofy. Like, for example, this card background uh, makes it very see-through, right? Um, and it's because of the color of the card and the color of my green screen. It's not doing a, there's not enough contrast between them. Um, so like you can see the other side of the card comes through just fine. It's the, uh, this side. So we're going to run into a couple problems, uh, there. The other thing I can do is for example, um, so I got this card here. One thing I can do is I can also just completely shut off that camera like that. And then just turn it back on, off and on, off and on. You know, like, like so. So um, I got a couple options. Uh, feel free to give some feedback. Um, but I wanted to migrate to the app because uh, let me show you something with the app uh, that I think you're going to like. First of all, you can see the game board, right? So that game board is uh, very important. And then the next thing. Uh, so actually, before I switch over, let me show you the app a little bit better here. Okay, so there's certain things that the app can do and there are certain things that it can't do. Hence the reason why I have the, uh, the green screen thing going on because um, we need both. And, and I think that, you know, cause you do need to buy a copy of the game in order to play it. And the guy's not gonna give you all full functionality of the game on the website. So then you need to have your game set up in front of you um, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, you, you can put, do the app to at least save yourself some things. So, for example, I do have, uh, let me just show you all the table space that I'm using here, right? And, and I apologize, because the green screen's still on, so it's looking for green and trying to weed all that out. But, um, so you can see, like, these are all my characters that I built here, and then over there are all the different cards that I'm then way up in the top there, you can see is the uh, game board that is now on the app. I got more characters here. You got all the tiles over there. I have a toolbox with all the standees. And then I got even more cards for running the, uh, the Dark Lord over here on my, my left. Okay, so I'm going to put this back so we can, uh, we can get this situated a little better. The uh, shadow of the camera is actually what's showing up here at the bottom. There we go. And if I put the card out, all right, that's what it looks like. I, um, I have this little dark spot right here on the corner. I gotta figure out what's causing that. Let's try. That's definitely not gonna do it.
Yeah, so the... Yep. Definitely want the dual camera. So up here in the corner, it's actually... um. Here, I just need to change my my tripod here. There we go. That helps. I got a little bit of shade right here. Right there. So, anyways. You get the gist. And now the card looks dark because that's the shadow of the, uh, the camera coming down on it. Which, that part's annoying. So let's try to You know what? I can just zoom in. There. That works. No, I don't have the edges. Picking up the edge of the, the green screen. And the zoom in actually is really nice because I think that's easier to read. So, anyways. My apologies. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, move to um, the app here. Okay, so as you saw, I can move around. I'm just clicking and dragging. Um, I can zoom in and out. Uh, one, uh, the only thing that this thing really does for you is, for example, I can double click here and I can say, okay, the heroes are there. And you see the hero marker moved. So I'm going to put the hero marker back, back. Then I also have the ability to put a danger marker. So let's do that, actually. There's a danger marker currently right here. And then there's one back at the base. No, I'm sorry. It moved, yeah, back at the base. My apologies. Okay, so there's two danger markers currently on the board. And then uh, I believe we can just pick them up and move them around, like so. And I think we can do the same with the heroes. I can pick that up and move it around as well. So pretty cool, right? So we can we can use the app to keep track of where we are on the campaign map. Now, what can't it do? Well, first of all, uh, you know, we can zoom in on Burnick here. None of this works. Like, I can't I can't click on any of these shops. Nothing pulls up. I can't click on the city. Nothing. And then this little mission scenario showed up, but that's because um, here at the bottom, I can say, okay, if we're on T26, and I unlocked everything that's within a radius of three. Go. And then what it did was it, it got a web error. <laughs> that's not good. Um, let's do five. Go. And another web error. How about one? That's how this blue thing showed up here. So um, maybe we should just refresh the map. Oh, apparently I'm logged out. That might be part of the problem. So when you log in, um, it's going to look like this. You do need to make sure you're in the English version. It will by default be Spanish, which um, default to the developer because he is Spanish. And then the place you're seeing me go is in the campaign manager. You can see we have a thing here. And uh, there's my mill marker. And so, yeah, if I want to do five... Go. It's just saying there's no mission. It's because I didn't pick the territory. So I gotta go back here, do T26, five, go. And then boom, it's showing me that there's a mission there. And these are independent missions. These aren't the campaign missions. So I still need the campaign book to know where the campaign missions are. And I can always say, like for example, if you remember the first campaign mission was here, I can double click here and we can just make a custom note and say, you know, I gotta reach across my table here, mission one, for example. And then boom, I got a little pin here, and that's mission one. And in fact, I can even just move it around. So now, you know, mission two moved up to here, so I can put that there, and so forth. So I think that would work, right? I can show you, using the app, where the next missions are, and we can put pins there, and then this is, of course, letting us know where all the independent missions are. Technically, we don't know where this is. So let me remove that. 
in that. I don't know why this one's not removing, but it's supposed to. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and refresh this guy. It is in beta. It has got bugginess all around, but um, it's still functional enough. Okay, this, um, we can see campaign turns. Uh, we're on currently on week five, so I can move this up to five like that. So now um, we don't have to track our campaign turn. And then for the campaign data, uh, we got here, what's our accumulated treasure? Um, how many completed quests? Uh, things like that. And so right now our pending missions, I don't even know if it lets me fill this in very well, but, um, and I also don't know if the accumulated uh, treasure, uh, if it automatically works or if I have to manually type that in. My group value points, of course, I gotta put that in. So we have M10 and M3 unlocked. So right now, we're pending missions M10 and M3. So I don't know if that means anything, but we're gonna go ahead and save it. I don't think they're gonna show up on the map or anything crazy like that. They're not. Um, so I think he has bigger plans. It's just it's not reached fruition. Okay, so this is our campaign. And uh, right there, it does show what I typed. But I did have to type that in. But let's go back to home. Um, you can make your own maps. Because remember, this is a system, not just a game. And uh, But here's the part I want to show you. The uh, quest maps. So we're doing campaign and quest book one. Uh, I actually don't have the quest book two. And the mission we just completed was Rorg's Lair. So check this out. Now I don't appreciate that it keeps remembering what I did. Um, here we go, reset the map. Okay, so when you reset the map, this is what it looks like. This is where we started that mission. And so we could come over here and say, add my hero. So I created our paladin, and we never named our paladin, so it's just called paladin. So I'm gonna say, yeah, let's load the paladin. And then boom, you can see the paladin. It's right there. Then there's our little paladin card. And I need to make sure that really does match what I created. I think it does. Yes, yes it does. So um, if the Paladin's turn, he gets to move six bases. So we could go one, two, three, four, five, and then the Paladin ends his turn there. And then um, when we're ready to open the door, I can click on the door and say open, and then it reveals the next room to me. So I can actually play uh, without knowing what the entire scenario looks like. Now, there's some things I'm gonna have to use the scenario book to figure out, but um, I still think it's pretty cool. And uh, once I get all the other heroes added, we can, you know, basically manage our whole party here. So then let's say that there was enemies that spawned in this room. I can click on enemies here, and uh, there's a lot of them, of course. But the bandits here is where we were, so I'm going to click on bandits. And so we ended up getting like, um, for example, there was a rat folk bandit, right? So I have to double click on it, and then I can say, okay, rat folk, rat folk bandit spawned there, and there's his card. And you can see he has three health, um, and... Um, you know, let's say we stun him. Which one's a stun? I can click that to show that he's stunned. And then uh, a little stun marker shows up on him. And then this Red Folk Bandit is armed with a sling. So he had a uh, single-handed weapon. Or maybe a two-handed weapon. Oh, 
I'm sorry, a bow. He had a ranged weapon, and he was using a sling. So which one of these is the sling? Bows, gunpowder, crossbows. It was none of those. Let's try throw. So by uh, doing all that, you can see that he actually has a little bow that shows up next to him. So you can keep track of, I don't have to find the standee anymore. I mean, it is a little weird that uh, there's no picture for the Rat Folk Bandit. Um, but you can, you know, get all that, you know, in place. And you can even mark what kind of weapons they have. And you can even say, okay, this guy has a shield. And I don't know why the, the clicking is so slow, but... Um, so I can say, okay, he has a buckler shield, and that shows up next to him. And then if the shield ever breaks, I just click it, and it comes off. He no longer has a shield. And I can just, you know, unclick it. He's got the leather armor, or the light armor, or the heavy armor, and so forth. So um, that really helps. Uh, the, where's his stats? I know he has them. Oh, and you can also do like line of sight. So you can say, okay, um, what kind of line of sight, you know, does, can he see to here? And then you can just, you know, like for example, uh, he can't, if you put that in the center, it looks like he could see that space, but he for sure can't see that one. You know, so it's some very rudimentary things. Now, the part that um, is a little frustrating to me is that his stats are missing. I mean, you can see that he has three health, um, but where's his uh, dexterity, all that other stuff, his agility? Uh, that's the part I'm finding. Oh, and that's the direction he's facing. Oh, that's cool. So you can even mark like which direction he's facing. Um, I would swear to you that there was, let's try the bandit boss. Was he the same way? He was. So it doesn't show their skills. That's a little troubling. It makes it a lot less helpful. Like, okay, so fine, he's gonna do, let's say he does a, a bow attack. You need to know how much to add to your dice. So uh, now here's the thing. Um, so we got the boss here, right? He needs to roll two dice. So I just come over here and I say roll two dice. And there you go, you can see the dark player rolled a three and three. And let's say he was attacking the paladin. So I can just click on the paladin and say roll two dice. And that's compared to my four. Um, so you can see the dice roll here as well. So I don't even have to roll dice anymore. Um, but the problem is, is we still have to add all the modifiers. So. Um, my Paladin, you can see his modifiers, because as soon as I click on him, uh, sorry, as soon as I click on him, see, you can see my sheet really well, and it's got all the skills. But um, for whatever reason, the, um, the enemy sheet does not. So there's, for example, I just added a Dwarf Bandit. I mean, it's the, it has the hit points correct. And by the way, if you ever need to change it, you just come up here and hit plus or minus. Um, one thing that's interesting is my computer downstairs, which is my main computer I do my gaming on, um, like this actually won't let me increase his health above five. So that's interesting. I think you can double click on it and write total life. And so that way you can, so it knows that his health points are only up to five. Um, I'm just trying to think of like, what can we do? Yeah, so his skills are missing. Okay, so there's, there's a drawback. Um, but the dice rolling, and then by the way, if I need to roll the main die, I just click on this thing up here on the top right. But it's a little touchy, because like I've clicked on it twice now, and the picture hasn't changed, but now you can see it changed. I wish they made that a little better. Um, because 
like I click on it and maybe I just rolled the same image and uh, it looks like I didn't actually roll the dice. Um, so I'm a little annoyed with that. I don't like the, this roll here, but it, it is there, it's built in. And um, the heroes, for example, you can see we got all these different pictures we can use for the various heroes. So uh, that's built into the game. Um, we even have all the creatures and mercenaries. So by the way, that's what my water elemental is supposed to look like. <laughs> um, I still never found the tile. Uh, in fact, I, I, I did sort out all the tiles in the game, and I'm missing at least a dozen tiles, uh, at least according to what's in the bestiary book. So either I'm missing a complete sheet of tiles, or not everything comes with the game. So yes, and then down here at the bottom, uh, we can track our victory points. And then the, uh, the victory points for the dark player. And then uh, here, how many reserve points he has. Remember, he started with 57. And then, of course, how many coins do we have? And, you know, what turn is it? So and then there's plus or minus signs here that we can use for everything. He buried it in the bottom right corner, and it's annoying because you can see that my little menu bar keeps popping up. I know I can shut that off, but it's still, it's annoying. And then the other thing that's annoying is if I try to do this on my iPad or my device, um, this is so far near the bottom that um, if I try to tap it with my finger, it actually causes the, the iPad bottom uh, doohickey to pop up as well. So um, it basically, it doesn't work uh, on an iPad. It's too, I need to be able to shrink the window. So uh, anyway, so you can see I have my uh, hero in place. Uh, for this particular map, you know, if I decided to open this door, I can now do so. And boy, the response time when I clicked on it was really poor. Then boom, you got the next room. Then it even shows, like I can see that this is a, uh, an armory, right? So I can even see what the furniture is. And then I can, you know, double click on that and then get this open. And I can see that there's a bed and... Just a bit. And so forth. Okay? I think you get the gist. Um, it's very rudimentary, but the, the fact that I don't have to go find the tiles and stuff is sort of nice. So I don't I don't know like how excited I am to be playing it on here versus playing it. There's something to be said about having the physical board in front of you. Um, but it is nice. Um, the other thing uh, that you can do is Figuring out how to get out of this, of course, is always a fun thing to figure out. That was not the right button. Boy, this, this is really lagging hard. Okay. You can see all your skills. It's just a, a real quick way. So like, for example, I can come to here. Uh, lots of criticisms, of course. I can't say, okay, I have a paladin, so only show me the ones that a paladin can equip. Um, it doesn't, it's not that uh, smart. Um, then for uh, example, my heroes, I've only created one. And you can see I created a human paladin and I named it paladin because we didn't have a name for him. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, we would have to create the other characters. And I wanted to save that for, for the video here to show you how this would work. So uh, let's go ahead and create our wizard. So we're gonna do a new wizard here and we named him Chun, which isn't fully thematic, but um, all right, JB, you are the one that always gets my movies right. What movie is Chun from? This one's a more challenging question. Uh, his most famous line is, of course, I'm Chun. Okay, so then it shows here and you gotta pick the race. So the race that we chose is the Shard Mind. Um, and you can see they're immune to poison. 
I always forget all that stuff, but we're supposed to remember all those things. And then we can pick the class. And again, uh, you scroll down here, and it shows you the classes. And of course, his class, I think, is this one. I think I need, I'm zoomed in too much. Here we go. Let's zoom out a little. So it's the wizard. And yeah, that, that pop-up is so annoying. So now we have to spend our points. And so uh, we, did, we just went through this exercise. We're at six movement. My combat is two. Uh, and it already took into effect that he gets a minus one because of the class we chose. Then a three, three. So a six, two, three, three. And then a four. So we went up twice on the agility. That makes sense. And then one on the intelligence. Two on the mana, and then one on the courage. Perfect. So then uh, he starts with these skills. I can't pick the new skills yet until after we um, finish creating the character. And we did go water, but like for example, if I'm like, ah, oh, screw water, I didn't really like it that much. We could have chosen something else, but but here um, we have ah, so here. He's choosing the spells for us, and those are the four he chose. What's interesting is those aren't the... There's more spells than four water spells. That's so funny. The four that he picked are the exact four. Nope, nope, nope. He picked Crushing Wave for us, but we don't have Crushing Wave. We have Treacherous Waters. But everything else we do have, the water elemental, the ice wall. So uh, because we're creating a new character, um, it randomized them for us. So I would have to be able to customize this to match our character that we're currently playing. But I can't do that right now. Then for his equipment, remember we're limited to the 20 bucks. So uh, we did get a staff. And... Um, This part I really like. So we got a component for magic. We got a mana potion, which so far we haven't needed at all. And then we have a magic scroll. And that was it. So no armor, no nothing else. And so we can go ahead and save. All right, so he had 10 coins left. And our other hero had some as well. So let's see, the paladin had. So now the question is, is how do I add skills to this hero? So I should be able to come here. And so we can add animals, we can add mercenaries, we can add magic. I don't want to add any, oh, here we go. I want to add skills. So we got the, um, for the paladin, we ended up getting combat master which is this one right here. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign and then boom, he's got, should have Combat Master, I don't see it here. He's got Champions of the Gods of Good, Champions of the God of Evil. Oh, here we go. Used to Armor and then Combat Master. So we, uh, we modified him a little and we can come back. Hopefully that saved. Let's find out. Yep, I guess that saved. So you gotta be careful with uh, your spells here. Uh, so now I'm gonna come in and let's see if we can manipulate his spells. So we didn't have Crushing Wave, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Yeah, we're gonna remove Crushing Wave, and we're gonna add Treacherous Waters. And the problem is, is I need to be able to add the crushing wave. That's a real problem. The treacherous wave is not showing up anymore. Maybe if I come back, it'll be there. Or crushing wave, I meant. There it is, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so those are the two we don't have for the water. And per the rules, I can't add other spells 
until I finish getting these two. But they do show all the other spells should we get to that point. And what's really cool is it's limiting the spells that I can select to the ones that only this character can have with this class. So that part works really well. And you just saw how we, could, we were able to customize and add some extra skills and whatnot to everything. And um, again, it all works very, very well. And so just like that, we were able to create a character and, and then I have to create the other four. So um, go to new hero. And then we're going to do uh, Arma more. Instead of Legolas. Okay, um, this is a really awful system where you have to go left and right. So there you can see like the vampires, the trolls, the evil races, which we've we've been ignoring, but uh, this particular one is an elf. And then we pick the forester, which you have to find the tree. Elven forester right there. And then uh, let me look at the skills real quick. We got Six movement, three combat, I have three strength, yep. The shooting skill is five, the agility is four, intelligence is five, mana is six, and then the courage I believe is, no, it's three. Health is four. How am I missing a point here? Six, three, three, five, four on the agility. You know what? I, I think I shortchanged myself when I made this character. So uh, we're going to just add one more to the courage because that's the only one we can afford. We only have one point left. There we go. So one more courage than what I had on the character. Huh, that's funny. All right, so those are the skills that you start with, right? You get the scout, the sharp senses, and the taming animals. And then we could go to the magic. And, oh, this is very close. The dexterity enhancements is the one we keep casting. The other one, of course, we don't have, but we'll have to wait until later before we can change that. And then as far as the equipment goes, currently has leather armor. For four, and then an elven bow. I'm probably passing by it. Here it is. And then, uh, like I said, we were gonna buy stuff for the uh, for the elf or for the rogue. Six points worth of stuff, or six bucks worth of stuff, but um, and then just give it to them between missions. But right now, we're not gonna do that because it's too cumbersome to move around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. So there we go. So our memoir is in place. And then we can go to, uh, let's see, the skills. We added Giant Tamer, which is a Scholar skill. So come over here, and Giant Tamer is added to the skills. And then for the magic, uh, we did not get... We didn't get any of those. Oh, maybe it's because we're under this. Nope, that's not it either. We have dexterity enhancement, and then we have oh, detecting evil. So we're going to add detecting evil, and then we got to get rid of 
placate tempers. All right. So now we go back to my heroes. So we got three of them created. And now we're going to go ahead and do our halfling rogue, which uh, nobody named him. So he's going to be fatty. And the halfling part is here. And then his class is, he's a rogue. And he's got a five, three, two, three, three, five, Five. Oh my gosh, did I screw up here too? No. Five. There we go. And of course he has all those skills. And we added uh, Expert Trapper. But we can't do that yet. And then for his equipment, He has the great cat. And then he also has a short sword. If we can find that. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna add He has leather armor, and then we have to add He's got a couple of potions and a lantern. So lantern, and then brick fire and dexterity. Oh, and then he's got the pick locks. So he's got a lot of stuff. And you can see here, his weight is nine out of 10. But he has this mount that should be carrying some of his weight. I don't know when the game's gonna take it out into account, but yeah, he's all filled up. And then, um, We got one more to go, and that should be. Oh yeah, <laughs> need. And this guy. Definitely not an infernal. He's a dwarf. And he's a barbarian at that. And I gotta grab his sheet here. And just to show you, that's his sheet. So we're gonna do movement five, strength five, I'm sorry, four. Three. We increase his agility to three. And I think that's it. Everything else is a four. Health is a, his health is a six. So I've been playing the game wrong. <laughs> um, he gets a plus one, I think, because he's a barbarian. Oh, I'm such a goober. It's a good thing we're doing this. So 
So yeah, got that out of the way. And then uh, he has all the same skills that it says, but he also got combat instructor. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. To, well, we will later. His equipment though, he has the battle ax. This guy right here. And then he has studded leather. Now he accumulated some stuff while we were playing. I don't know if I can afford it all uh, here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say save and then we'll add it after the fact. All right, so he's got He has a healing potion, a strength potion, heroic, and pickaxes. Heroic, healing, strength, and then Pickaxes. That was, uh, that was pickaxes, by the way. <clears throat> That's what we got for looting the final corpse on that final battle. When we rolled two sixes, we got a random common object. Then the uh, skills here. He's a combat instructor, so we got one of these. And there it is, combat instructor. Boom. Okay, so there's our heroes. One, two, three, four, five. So what we do is we go to the campaign manager and I can put in our accumulated gold, but we're gonna go ahead and, well, so we can enter, but it doesn't let us add our heroes here. This is the part that always confuses me. So I gotta go back home. For example, let's say we're gonna go do quest three. I would come here and Buried Kings is the next quest we would do. So there's the opening screen. And I didn't even look at quest three yet, so I have no idea what's beyond you know, this area here. And so then uh, what we would do is we would say, you know, add my hero, right? And then um, we can add Armamor, Chun, Fatty, Mead, and Paladin. Okay, they're all there. They're just all on top of each other, like so. So we would have to, you know, position them. They're ready to enter the, the map. And then uh, what it also doesn't do is it doesn't calculate the dexterity. So I think... Yeah, I can't, can't edit those here. And then uh, it's also cool because it shows in the red number, you know, what their, um, what their health is. So for example, uh, Fatty Bulger has a dagger. So I can go here into the one-handed weapon and I can say he has, oh no, he has a short sword. So that's showing that he has a sword. Then I can show that my paladin has a one-handed weapon uh, a sword, and then also has a shield. It's an elven shield, but we're gonna just say regular one. And so you can see like the different symbols showing up to represent that. Um, the other thing that's cool is like you can click here on scenario and it gives you the flavor text. So I can let you guys read the flavor text without having to read it to you. That is always a wonderful perk for me. Maybe for you too. And then um, our goal is to knock out the quest leader. Uh, the faction we're up against is the creatures of the night. So I know which enemies to go grab. Um, and I don't even have to grab them. They're all right here. So creatures of the night are in here, right there. There they all are. Um, I wish the pictures were a little more fleshed out. 
and had better graphics. But, um, but yeah, we got, um, for our setup, it says we need the achievement and reserve and point counters before the building. The player decks set aside face down one of the obstacle cards, blah, blah, blah. Dark player must spend 10 reserve points on the leader. So um, I may have done that leader battle wrong. We went down to 10 reserve, giving him a bunch of extra health. But then I think you're, oh no, um, I apologize. No, uh, you, you have to roll a die and that's how many extra skills he gets. We did that right. There's some special rules. All sections of the scenario are dark, including the main room. Then of course at the quest end, we get plus one experience if the heroes have achieved the mission on the first attempt, plus one if we scored more than the dark, and plus one who survived and wasn't knocked out, as long as the group discovered at least twice as many sections of the scenario as the number of heroes that started the adventure. So I think that means that since we have five heroes, we need to discover 10 sections. I'm assuming that means map tiles. It's an interesting thing. I'd have to go check the scenario book and see if it says the same thing. Okay, so that's how this works. And we would be able to, to play the scenario exactly as you see it here. I think that's pretty cool. And I hope you guys agree. Um, now we can put some stuff here at the bottom. Like for example, um, if you'll notice, we had coins left over after we did our initial purchase. The game didn't track it. It's not showing our coins. It's not showing any of that. And in fact, um, if I come back up here, because I want to go back out of this, I you know, click on my heroes again. I don't think it shows my coins at all anywhere in here. Uh, here it is. I have six. So it shows it right there. So it does keep track of the coins that way. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, we now wanna go shopping. And um, I don't know if you can see this, but we have, there's five, two, and then these are five coins each. Three, four, so this is five, 10, I'm going to start doubling these up. Those are 10 each. That's five more and five more and five more and then two more. So if we add it all up, uh, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70. We have 72 gold. That's a lot. So right now our group has 72. And there are several ways we can manage this. We can go to the campaign manager and enter. And I believe the campaign data, we can put in that we have 72. Again, I don't think it does us any good because we store the campaign data, but it doesn't like, um, doesn't do anything for us. It's not like I can click on a shop or, or do anything. So I gotta once again go home. And if I go to the quest map again, and click on quest book one, go to the Buried King's quest. All of our heroes are still here. It, for whatever reason, didn't save where they were, but that's okay. But you can see our coins. Doesn't show any. So we're at 72 for now. I mean, it does store that once I type it in, but that's where we're at for now. But we actually, um, we're not at the mission yet. We're still in town, and we have to do the townly things. So um, I guess the, the whole reason you're seeing me bounce around like this is because I don't know 
Like, it's really awkward, this part of the game management. Um, now, uh, if you guys ever wanted uh, a key, you could join my game, for example. And, you, you know, once I... You guys actually have my key here. You're, you're watching my screen. <laughs> um, I believe... Well, that's not it. It is the maps. So this Buried Kings map, right there is a password. You can see it on my screen. So theoretically, you guys could try to join my game. And uh, I don't know what good that would do, but like if one of you is actually around and wants to like help me manage the characters, I'm all for it. I just, um, you know, I, I record at weird hours and whenever I have time. So um, I apologize because I'm not very good at coordinating, um, but it is, it's doable. All you have to do is type in that password and you'd be able to join and I have no idea what kind of control you can do. But uh, you could probably definitely create some, some havoc. All right, so we're going to go ahead and return to maps. Well, cancel. we got to save. Let's hit save first. Then we'll return to maps. And I would say let's just start here. We're at 72 gold. Um, we have two missions. And let me uh, look up where those missions go. So we... Um, we ended up getting the extra 10 gold for completing that last mission. And what it did was it opened up M3 and M10. So M3... Um, I don't even see fish. Oh, okay. Okay. So mission 3 is in T41. So our next mission is actually right there. And then M10 is also unlocked. And that one is right there. Anytime I have to type, I have to get up off my chair because the computer is actually not near me. So there's always going to be a delay there. Okay, that's M10. Now, uh, one thing I'm noticing is, yeah, we could go over and do M3. There is this little town that has a combat trainer there. I don't think we've dealt with that person before. Um, but more importantly, there's another town up here that also has a combat trainer, has a blacksmith, doesn't have much else, but uh, like everything else it has, I think we already experienced. So there's another town we could visit, and there's even another one here. That one looks like it has an apothecary and a tavern. And then uh, it looks like this one way up here, Bebal, is where you can learn a new spell. So we could walk all the way up there to learn a new spell like now, and then do that before we do a mission. And there's actually probably no harm in doing so other than uh, game weeks are going to go by um, while we're doing that. So uh, that's just some stuff to, uh, to keep in mind. Now, the, uh, now that you see the, the overview, we are, of course, dealing with this town here. And we get to do three things because we went into town to finish the quest. So we, we get to do three things before we leave. And I'm going to go ahead and click back on home. Because I think uh, right now, since we're in town, we're going to be doing stuff with the heroes. So, for example, we might be trying to upgrade their equipment, you know, things like that. And then also, uh, I'm noticing some symbols of places that we currently don't have available to us. And my apologies, I should have, I should have gotten all this money out of the way because it's clogging up the screen, I'm sure. Um... So one of them I saw was an oracle. So there's an oracle that was out in the middle of the woods. There was a blacksmith armory. So all weapons and armor are for sale. With the result equal to higher than that indicated on the object's card, it will be available. Uncommon objects. 
um, and they can repair things. There was the herbalist, and there was combat school. Character can choose pay two coins, pass an intelligence test. Um, you can get one experience point at five or six, and you can only get three during a year. Everybody except for religious fanatics can go there. And then of course the School of Magic is where we learn the new spells. And I think that was it. So we gotta make up some choices. We but first of all we gotta we gotta do a whole bunch of stuff here. First, like everybody's injured. Everybody needs to get their health points back, everybody needs to get their mana points back and their uh, fate points or fortune points or whatever they're called. So we all have to go to the inn and, um, and do that first. So let me find the inn card and we can start with that. Okay, so I have it all set up where I can shut the, this off, shut that off and then turn this on. And then this should be What the heck is going on here? Oh, it's because that's all that's on my screen. Here we go. I gotta zoom it out. My camera is now on normal mode. And as you can see, I have a screen thing that I purchased and it's just sitting here in the middle of my table. That's the reason, it was confusing me. Um, okay. I thought it'd be easier to shut off the uh, all the fancy stuff and go back to regular camera for this phase. So we are going to have to spend some money. And I'm trying to find... We have the tavern, uh, we have the governor's quarters, the inn, and the market were the places we thought about going. We do have the possibility of buying a home. The cost of acquiring a house is 20 coins. From the moment you buy it, you'll always be able to come to this place. And you can leave your belongings there. You cannot acquire homes in settlement of an opposing alignment. Each hero will recover their lost vitality, mana, fortune points, etc. Whatever one or more heroes return home, you can roll for a whole group. And on a 2d6, Critical failure, you'll be robbed of half of the items and coins that you kept there. That's always a good time. Okay, so should we spend the 20 coins for the home? I'm actually very tempted to do that. Um, the home would have to be in Vernick, which is the bottom left corner. It would be probably more ideal if we could get the home to be more in the middle of the map. Because um, you only have one home, by the way. So uh, that's something... I think we're gonna have to evaluate there. Putting the home in Vernick, of course it's tucked away in a nice little corner of town. It's almost like Hobbiton. Um, I think we're gonna bite the bullet and just do the market here, uh, or sorry, the inn. So here you can see a recovery is two coins. Each hero recovers all lost vitality, mana, and fortune points. And then there's extra coins if you have heavy armor, which the Paladin does. And we don't have any projectiles. And then, of course, we have to pay for the... So it would be 2 times 5. It's 10 coins to go to the inn. And then 11 because of the, um, the paladin having heavy armor. That's half the cost of the home. So a part of me is like, well, maybe we don't go to the inn. And we're going to go ahead and buy a home. But I'm going to be selfish and buy the home. At, like, we're going to literally just spend a few weeks traveling. We're not going to do any any uh, missions we're just going to travel and then uh, put our home somewhere that's more centralized that's a, a very possible thing to do uh, then i'm being cheap and i'm not spending the 11 coins on the end so um, let's set this up so if i'm going to do this i would be setting aside 20 coins for the home i don't want to spend those so i'm going to just put it on the home and we're just going to put it off camera and that 20 coins is just going to sit there so we can pay for the home 
Everything else we do from here on out, we could use the rest of our coins for. So we do have the tavern, the king and governor's quarter, which is more of a dice rolling, um, see what happens kind of thing. The inn we already talked about, and then of course there's the market. And this is where we're gonna roll 1d6 per group and campaign turn when heroes visit a market. On a six, we get a magic object. I think we already did this roll. And I did not get a six, I think I got a five. Um, and then I said I was too tired and that's when I logged off. So uh, we're gonna set that aside. And let's uh, go through the equipment. So I'm gonna actually pull up the app. So I'm gonna show
Oh my gosh, I've been spending... Okay, so one of the drawbacks to shutting off the stuff that I did is that my sound shut off, I bet. I, I'm just realizing that it wasn't recording my voice. Um, oh man, I did so much talking. Ugh, this video is a waste. I My apologies uh, to everybody. I, I know what happened. Um, it was just a mistake when I was shutting these cameras on and off. Uh, the the camera that I left on was had no actual sound recording going on. So uh, I'm guessing that this video has a big, long 15 to 20 minutes of silence where I'm moving around, I'm doing stuff, and you're not hearing a dang thing. So I'm going to repeat myself real quick. Um, we're going to um, probably buy an armor for uh, Armamore. And uh, we're going to use this card so I can buy an armor that gives a penalty to perception, but this ignores that. So, um, so this is actually a pretty nice artifact to get, and Armamore is the perfect type of character for it. I rolled a 5 for the tavern, so we unlocked a random mission. Going to have to figure that out. I decided we're not going to stay at the inn. And the reason is because we're going to go to the home. We're going to go build a home. The problem is you can only build a home in one place. And so the big thing I was explaining is I'm going to go to the center of the map. We're going to build a home there. And I have the 20 coins set aside so we can afford it. And every time you stay at a home, uh, you get um, you get to heal. So we're going to go build a home somewhere and then stay there. Uh, I have to find a spot in the center of the map because if I put it in Vernick, it's only down in the southwest corner. And we're going to waste a lot of time traveling to there versus the center even though now i'm going to waste some time traveling to the center to build this home uh, i still think that that's the better move uh, beyond that i'm looking at armor for the dwarf barbarian and the human paladin and i rolled for the uncommon in the market and i rolled an eight which means that i can't get anything that's got an uncommon value of nine which a lot of the armors have. So I, none of those armors are available to me. So I may just wait until another week and roll again. The other thing I was uh, commenting on is that I noticed that the armors reduce, for example, this is the chainmail the paladin's wearing. It reduces their, um, their agility by, by one. And in the battle, I kept looking at the agility and seeing a three, and that really should be a two. Um, so, and the Barbarian's got the same problem. So, uh, when it comes to determining, like, whether or not you can hit somebody, uh, the, the lower agility really does matter, um, in, in that regard. So, that was what I was trying to explain. I, of course, I summarized it a lot more here, and again, I'm really sorry. I, um, I don't know, I, I truly and honestly don't have the ability to go and edit this video before I upload it. I know I screwed it up, and that's the problem with using this app. So the last thing was, as I was saying, I was going to take a break, and that I've been, uh, my son and I have been playing Stars of Akarios. So I've been board gaming like mad this week. Um, I would love to show you Stars of Akarios. I just can't figure out how to do that without disrupting our campaign we're doing right now. Um, but I'm also showing you this game, and I'm having fun playing this as well. So, um, uh, one of the things I wanted was for you folks to take this time, because I'm probably going to veg the rest of the night, go watch some Netflix and just relax. Um, I wanted to you guys to, to give some feedback. Do you like the use of the app that I was demonstrating here in this video? I just demonstrated how I can screw up using the app, right? I, I, was, I was clicking things on and off, and I ended up shutting off my audio. So I just showed one of the downfalls of the app. Um, but with that being said, you know, maybe you guys still liked, you know, what it seemed to be, you know, producing for you. I don't know. So uh, just let me know. Give me some feedback. Um, for me, the, the reason why I would want to use the app is that uh, I don't have to set up the tiles. And that part is really, really nice. I still have all the, the cards. So, for example... I have this, which is a nice fleshed out bandit boss, has all their skills written on it. So the fact that the app doesn't have any of that is fine by me. 
as long as I have my little blip on there that I can move around and just show where he's at and which way he's facing, I think that's good enough. Um, we got the cards here. I got the green screen uh, so you can, you know, use the green screen to, um, um, you know, so while we're in the middle of the battle, I can have the tiles up, you know, up here and over there. And then uh, this could be, you know, brought forward so you can see, you know, okay, this guy is the one that's rolling right now and we can, we can rock and roll. So um, that's the advantage of it. And um, that's all I got for you. So anyways, uh, again, so many apologies for screwing that up with the audio. And I've been having audio nightmares this whole month when, with recording. So uh, thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome.